Physics students, good afternoon. Mr. Fugit here. Uh, in this video today, we're going to be looking at forces acting on an object, object specifically things like Newton's second law, uh, as we move an object uh, across a rough surface. And so, uh, this video is specifically geared towards one of the problems on your uh, homework assignment number six, and which covers over forces. And so, in this problem, this is going to be uh, question number two, which is the first of a two part question. It says this. A block weighing 9.6 newtons requires a force of 2.2 newtons to push it along at constant velocity. What is the coefficient of friction for the surface? So here we're applying a force to an object and getting it moving at a constant velocity. So the first thing we'll always need to do anytime we're looking at forces on an object is draw a free body diagram. So we're told a few things. We're told that we are pushing this block at a constant velocity. So, since there's probably a force of gravity pulling that block down, because our block, we can assume it's in contact with the ground because it's experiencing friction, there's going to be a normal force. And then we also have yeah, the force we're applying, the push force, and our force of friction. We'll call this FK, kinetic friction, because our box is moving. Now, if you look at your problem statement, it's going to seem a little bit strange. You're given a, what looks like a weight of 9.6 newtons. And now, that's going to sound a little bit tricky. Your value is going to be different, but the idea is the same. A weight doesn't just measure the matter of an object, its mass. It measures how gravity is affecting that object. Okay? And so, when you're given a weight, that's actually your force of gravity. You'll notice the units, newtons, are also a way to kind of lead us to what we're looking at. So that force of gravity is also our weight, which we're told is 9.6 newtons. Okay? So okay, all it's telling you is the, the weight of the object. We're not really going to deal with its mass here, which you'll notice later we don't need. Okay? Now we're also told okay, it requires a force of 2.2 newtons to push at a constant velocity. So our push force is 2.2 newtons. Okay? And what we're looking for overall is our coefficient of friction. This is what we want to try and find. Okay? Now, that coefficient of friction shows up in one place. We have an equation. Looks like this. Our force of kinetic friction is equal to our coefficient times the normal force. This is the equation that we are going to utilize. Okay? So in order for us to find that coefficient, we need two things. One, our frictional force, and two, our normal force. Okay? Frictional force shows up in the x direction. Normal force is going to be in the y. So where we're going to need to go is where we typically go. Right? We want to try to figure out what's going on with those two forces. So now that we have a free body diagram, we're going to use Newton's second law. Remember, second step is our second law. So step two is going to look like this. Sum of forces in the x direction is mass times acceleration in the x. We'll start there. Now, pay attention. Your problem statement says... We're pushing at a constant velocity. Now, velocity, that's telling us how fast we're going. Acceleration is a measure of how fast, or not how fast, but how much our velocity is changing. So if I'm at a constant velocity, that means I have no acceleration. What that tells me is that my push force, FP, and if I sum up my forces, we'll say FP is positive because of our coordinate system. To the right is positive x. Up is positive y. So we'll say fp minus fk is equal to 0. And yeah, one in the positive direction minus the other will be 0 because we're at a constant velocity. So if I move my force of friction over, I'm going to add it to the other side. fp equals fk. And so we can use Newton's second law to find out this relationship. Our push force is going to be the same as our force of kinetic friction because we're moving at a constant velocity. So our push force, we're told is 2.2 newtons, is also the same as our force of friction. And that's one of the forces we need to find our coefficients. Now I've got one piece, I just need the other. Now to find that other piece, I'm going to need to use what I know about the y direction. So I'm gonna come down here, oh, excuse me. I'm gonna write out Newton's second law, but now in the y direction. Sum of forces is equal to mass times acceleration in the y. Okay. Okay. Got our free body diagram, now we're using Newton's second law. Now in the y direction I have two forces. My normal force going up 
and my force of gravity coming down. Okay? So I would write that as F in minus F G is equal to, well, this is where it gets again a little bit tricky, but we have to look at our problem statement. We're moving okay, at a constant velocity. So what that should tell me again is that my acceleration is going to be zero. We can probably also deduce that if I'm pushing horizontally, our box isn't going to be moving at all vertically. So this value is going to go to zero. So F in minus F G is equal to zero. Very similar to what we did in the X direction, I want to find F in. So I'm going to move my force of gravity over. And we can come up with this relationship. Our normal force is equal to our force of gravity, or the weight that our problem mentioned. So this is equal to the weight, which we were told is 9.6 newtons. Okay? All of those are equal. Our normal force is equal to our force of gravity because of Newton's second law. That's equal to the weight, or the 9.6 newtons. So now we have both pieces that we need to find our coefficient of friction. So I'm going to come to a new page and continue working. So our coefficient of friction shows up in this equation. Fk, our frictional force, is equal to our coefficient times the normal force. Okay? Now I can't plug in through our equation in this format because our coefficient's not by itself. So to get that coefficient by itself, I'm going to divide by the normal force on both sides of our equation. And what that will leave us with Okay, the normal force will cancel out on the right-hand side. And I'll be left with an equation that looks like this. Our coefficient is equal to our frictional force divided by our normal force. This will look like something familiar to what we've seen in the lab in this unit. So now, I'm just going to plug in these values. Our coefficient of friction is equal to my frictional force, which from the previous problem is the same as my push force, 2.2 newtons. divided by our force, our uh, normal force, which from the previous problem is the same as our force of gravity, the weight, the 9.6 newtons. So 9.6 newtons. So 2.2 divided by 9.6. Let's get our calculator, see what we can come up with. When I plug this in, I get a value for my coefficient of approximately 0 0.229. Round that to about 0 0.23. And now, according to what we know about coefficients of friction, this is what would be kind of a lower end value. So this would describe a surface that isn't extremely rough, but it's not completely smooth either. There's going to be a little bit of friction here. Kind of the range we've dealt with is about zero to one and a half. And if we're getting something like 20 or 15 or 10, that means we're probably a little bit high. We might not have been plugging in some of our numbers correctly. Okay? But hopefully you can see here, we have all the pieces we need to find our force, <coughs> excuse me, our coefficient of friction. Okay? So as you go forward, when you see that weight, it's just describing our force of gravity. Okay? Hopefully this will get you a working in the right direction for problem number two on your homework. Okay? Best of luck.